So here we are with the Gravekeeper's deck, and once again to remind you guys, this deck is completely free to play. All I've done is use gems to make this deck, and this deck is good enough to help you to climb ranks, but it won't help you to reach the highest rank of all, King of Games. So just keep that in mind. Keep in mind that this deck is good, but not good enough to make you reach the highest rank of the game. So let's just go through the cards one by one, explaining each card's ability, I guess, or what I used to combo with it. So the first card is the Gravekeeper's Oracle. Now this is a 10 star monster, meaning that you need two monsters to summon this card. But it does allow you to use three cards, three Gravekeeper cards to summon this card. Or even one, actually, which is quite unique for this card. Now this card's ability is depending on how many cards you use to tribute summon this. So whether it's one or two or three, you can activate these effects in order. Now if you sing if you summoned this card using one tribute, you're able to make this card gain attack points equal to the monster that you use for summoning this. So if you use just a four star monster, it's gonna gain 400 attack points. But if you actually use three monsters for summoning this card it will gain attack points equal to all of those monsters levels so whether you've used all let's just say level four monsters it's gonna gain attack points of let me just count it 1200 right for all four level four monsters and you used three of them you're gonna gain 1200 attack points. So this attack boost just depends on the amount of monsters that you use for tribute summon this. Now if you tribute summon this card using two monsters, it will destroy all set monsters that your opponent controls. So if there's a face down monster that your opponent controls, it's gonna get destroyed. And lastly, if you tribute summon using three monsters for this card, you can make all monsters that your opponent control lose 2000 attack and defense points. So if it's a blue eyes that's on the field, it's gonna lose 2000 attack points meaning it's gonna become a 1000 attack point monster uh yeah this that effect is really useful because losing 2000 attack points is a huge deal but this effect of losing 2000 attack and defense points they can only be applied to monsters that are face up so if it's a face down monster <laughs> that effect ain't gonna work the next card we have is the gravekeeper's visionary now you saw this card in action you can tribute summon this card using one gravekeeper monster so this is perfect for this deck because all of our cards here are gravekeepers now this card gains 200 attack points for each gravekeeper monster that's in the graveyard and also if this card were to be destroyed you can actually discard one gravekeeper that's in your hand now you saw in the draw i wasn't able to activate its effect because well that <laughs> blue eyes solid dragon negated this card's effect but if it hadn't then this card would have remained on the field and it would actually become stronger because you're discarding a gravekeeper and put it into the graveyard meaning that this card will gain another 200 attack so how i see it is that this card will keep on going stronger as long as you have a gravekeeper that's in your hand and also it won't ever be destroyed because as long as you've got a gravekeeper that's in your hand you're going to be discarding that gravekeeper put it into the graveyard and increasing this card's attack our next card that we have is the Gravekeeper's Chief card. Now, when you tribute summon this card, you can target a Gravekeeper that's in your in your graveyard, and then you can special summon that onto the field. And this other card's effect is that your graveyard will be unaffected by the effects of Necrovetti. Now, Necrovetti is another good card, another perfect card for this deck. But we'll go on to that card a bit later on. So, know that this card is very useful for blocking out the effects of Necro Valley and it will help you get a Gravekeeper monster that's in your graveyard and onto the field. Moving on we have the Gravekeeper Spy card and as I said in the draw this card is very useful for getting your Gravekeeper monsters from your deck onto the field allowing you to reduce the size of your deck so that you can get the card that you need. Now do remember that this card has to be face down for it to activate its effect. If you manage to special summon this card face up then this card's pretty useless. I mean, it's it's good for its high defense of 2000, but other than that, its flip effect is what makes it like a really good card. 
without its flip effect, this card just does nothing on the field. So once you use this card as a flip effect, it becomes pretty useless other than blocking out monsters from attacking you because of its high defense, meaning that your opponent has to be forced to summon a card of a higher attack. Now the next card is not a Gravekeeper card, it's the Keeper of Dragon Magic card. Now this card is actually just used to get the Magicalized Fusion, which you saw this spell card. It's only to get that card out from your deck. So other than that, I mean this attack is pretty good, but the true this true card's ability for this deck is to actually get that Magicalized Fusion card. Now the effect of this card is when you normal summon it, you're able to discard a card that's in your hand to get one of those fusion spell cards. Now what I normally do with this card is actually I summon it and I discard a Gravekeeper card that's in my hand so that it adds on to the total of the Gravekeeper monsters that I want to be used for the fusion of Quintet Magician. Next is the Gravekeeper's Recruiter, you've seen it in action. When this card gets sent into the graveyard, you're able to add a Gravekeeper monster that has a defense of 1,500 or less. Now this only leaves you with a certain amount of cards that you can choose from. You can choose the Oracle, the Chief, the Descendant, and the Nobleman, and the Spiritualist. So just remember that the Recruiter can get you these cards. Next is the Descendant. Now you saw in the draw, you can tribute a Gravekeeper to destroy a card that your opponent has. This applies either as a card in their field zone, their spell card zone or their monster card zone so it can pretty much destroy anything that's on the field as long as you tribute a gravekeeper as well next is the guard card you see in action when you flip this card up you can target a monster that your opponent controls and return it to their hand this is useful for you know getting rid of a card that your opponent has that's either like tribute summoned or something that's really annoying just bring it back into their hand so that it's in the hand and they get it clears up the field you know <laughs> moving on we have the nobleman you've seen it in action once again if this card gets destroyed by battle you can special summon a gravekeeper monster in face down defense position remember that it will special summon a gravekeeper in face down defense position this is vital information to remember because you can choose any gravekeeper monster in the deck but it will be set in face down defense position so if you get visionary out then that's a bad idea because its defense isn't that great so it's best to either put in gravekeeper spy so that you can continuously get cards out of your deck or maybe even the gravekeeper's card because it, it has the flip effect so just be sure to choose a a good monster if you choose the wrong one then it kind of messes up your card combos next is the spiritualist card now this card as i said it works the same way as a fusion card but you need to have Necro Valley on the field for this card to activate. If you don't have Necro Valley, then this card is basically nothing. It doesn't do anything. Also to remember that this card effect can only affect cards that are on the field or in your hand. It won't affect cards that are in the graveyard. So if you're hoping to use this card along with cards that are in the graveyard, it won't happen. <laughs> you have to make it so that it works with cards that are in your hand or on the field. Moving on to the spell cards, Necrofelly Throne. Now, this card is just useful for getting a Gravekeeper card that's in your deck and add it to your hand. And it can also be used to normal summon a Gravekeeper monster as well. Now, I mostly use this card to actually pick out Gravekeeper cards from the deck because you want to reduce the size of your deck, as I said. So this card is just perfect for that. Other than that, I really use the second effect of just normal summon a gravekeeper monster. There's only so few times where I actually do that, but as I said, I mostly go through the first option of getting a gravekeeper monster from my deck and add it to my hand. And here we are with the Necro Valley card. Now let's explain this card because it has a quite a lot of unique effects. The first effect is that it can boost your gravekeeper monsters by 500 attack points and defense points. So Something like your Gravekeeper Spy, its defense points will reach 2500, which is a big deal. And then there's other effects which are very unique. Cards in the graveyard cannot be banished, meaning that things like the Shirino deck, it always banishes cards from the graveyard, meaning that the Necro Valley card just completely blocks out 
those monsters effects and the other notable cards effect is that it will negate any card effect that will move any cards that are in the graveyard to either your hand or the field or somewhere else right it will negate any cards that will try to move a card from the graveyard so basically that once it goes into the graveyard that's it you're not getting it out of that graveyard and then there's other very minor effect of it will negate any card effect that changes types or attributes in the graveyard not that much of a deal because there's not a lot of good cards that will change a type or a attribute that's in the graveyard now the reason why i say this card's a big deal is because as i said the blue eyes deck the shirinoi deck those two decks which are really powerful they require cards to be in the graveyard and then once they're in the graveyard then you can either banish them or move them out of the graveyard to get something really powerful out of it so the necro valley just just it just completely blocks out those effects meaning that the shirinoi deck bricked <laughs> the blue eyes deck bricked to an extent but it can still work they can still find a way to <laughs> destroy necro valley or get rid of it so necro valley isn't that great but it is really good for blocking out those effects the next spell card is gravekeeper's steel steel or is it steely i I don't know. <laughs> this card is very simple. It lets you get two Gravekeeper monsters in your graveyard, add it to your hand, and it won't get affected by Necro Valley. So, uh, just like with the Gravekeeper's Chief, it just doesn't allow Necro Valley to block out this card's effect. So, that's why some Gravekeeper cards will allow you to get cards from the graveyard or whatever anything that deals with the graveyard there's some gravekeeper cards that will just block out necro valley which is really good <laughs> next is magicalized fusion we have two of them in the deck now magicalized fusion lets you banish cards that are on the field or in the graveyard to fusion summon a spell caster monster now i said in the duel this card kind of conflicts with necro valley so what you want to do is make sure necro valley is not on the field for you to play around with this card because once Necro Valley is on the field you're not going to be able to really utilize the power of Magicalized Fusion. Next is our trap cards War of Disruption. You see me add it in the other decks as well. It just basically reduces your opponent's monsters attack points by 100 depending on how many that they have. So if they have three monsters then their attack points will get reduced by 2400 which is a big deal. <laughs> If they have two monsters, 1,600. One monster, 800. Next is the Rite of Spirit. This card is unaffected by Necrovelli. Once again, very good. <laughs> and it lets you target a Gravekeeper monster that's in your graveyard, special, special summoning onto the field. As I said in the duel, it works like a monster reborn, just that it won't get affected by Necrovelli. And it can only affect Gravekeeper monsters. And it won't be able to <laughs> target a Gravekeeper monster that your opponent has if they have it so it can only work in your graveyard it can only work in your graveyard it can only work for gravekeeper monsters and lastly we have the continuous trap necro valley temple now this card has a lot of effects so let's go through them one by one the first effect is if you have necro valley on the field and a gravekeeper monster your opponent monsters will lose 500 attack and defense points so the way i see it is once you have necro valley temple on the field and Necrovelli on the field, along with a Gravekeeper monster, obviously. You're gaining 500 attack points, while your opponent monsters are losing 500 attack points. That's a big deal. <laughs> That's basically a 1000 difference of attack points and defense points. Just obviously depending on what monster they have. Now the second effect is if you don't have any card in your field zone, you can activate Necrovelli that's either in your hand or in the graveyard. So. Let's just suppose Necro Valley was destroyed in a previous turn, right? And then you ne activate Necro Valley Temple. You can add that Necro Valley that's in your graveyard and put it back onto the field zone, which is kind of annoying. <laughs> Meaning that your opponent has only one way of getting rid of Necro Valley, which is to destroy Necro Valley Temple. Or just if you manage to remove Necro Valley from play, that's it. Necro Valley is done. And especially how this deck only has one Necro Valley, 
yeah, it kind of sucks. And then the third ability is if this card gets destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can set a Necrovelli spell trap card directly from your deck. Now that effect doesn't really work too well because there's not a lot of Necrovelli cards. We only have Necrovelli itself and then Necrovelli Throne. <sighs> yeah, it kind of sucks. So I basically just go for those two effects. The effect of reducing your monster's attack and defense points by 500 or activating Necrovelli that that's either in your hand or in the graveyard. That's it. <laughs> it's another effect. I don't use it too much. And lastly, we take a look at the extra deck. So, as you've seen in my jewels, the Quintet Magician. You can fusion summon this card using five spellcasters. Now, if you manage to fusion summon this card using five spellcasters of different names, you can destroy all cards that your opponent controls. That right there is a huge game changer because there's actually been some duels where I was actually in a pick in a little tight situation where they could literally destroy me in one more turn but i managed to summon this card out and it just changed the game and instantly make me <laughs> made me won that game so that's why this card is extremely powerful and also this card cannot be destroyed by card effects meaning that this card is just completely op'd it can easily destroy a freaking blue eyes ultimate dragon because it has the same attack points as a blue eyes ultimate dragon but it doesn't have those effects of it can't be destroyed by card effects so this card is just completely broken and the very last card we have here is the supernaturalist now this card has 2000 attack and defense points but when you fusion summon this card it doesn't have those attack points anymore now to fusion summon this card you need two gravekeeper monsters nothing that big of a deal now when i said that this card won't have 2000 attack points is because its effect is that it will gain attack and defense points depending on what monsters you use for the fusion summoning so if you use two four star monsters then it's gonna get 800 attack points more now this card's other two effects makes this card really powerful so one of its effect is that while necro valley is on the field any card that you have in your field zone and also cards that are on your field they can't be destroyed by card effects meaning that to only destroy this card specifically you have to attack it in battle there's no other way if you try if your opponent tries to activate any card that will destroy a card this card will completely block it out it won't allow those things to happen meaning that your opponent only has one choice which is to attack and destroy this card by battle and but i guess by the time you summon this card it would have probably around 3000 attack points so good luck to your opponent <laughs> and then this other effect is you have to actually manually activate this card's effect otherwise you won't be able to activate this effect <laughs> so when you manually activate this card's effect at the end of your turn you can pick any gravekeeper monster or necro valley card from your deck and add it to your hand this card just is really good because as i said in one of my other videos if you're able to grab cards out of your deck and add it either onto your hand or your field that makes your deck really good so that's why this card's really powerful for both its abilities and its well high attack it can get to really high attacks and getting cards out of your deck so that's the whole gravekeeper's deck now as i said in my jewels there are cards that can counter this most notably the ancient ancient gear decks because their effects of negating card effects when they're in battle that effect completely blocks out the gravekeeper deck but other than that the gravekeeper deck is really powerful it can block out blue eyes decks it can block out the shirino deck and also as i mentioned once a card gets banished in this deck it's not coming back there's no card in this deck that can bring back banished cards so that's a little thing about this deck that i kind of find conflicting when it comes to magicalized fusion because if you summon the quintet magician and maybe your opponent has a card to block out an attack or something like that then the quintet magician isn't re really all that powerful the thing that i can think of that can block out the quintet magician sphere karibo changing it to defense position or maybe even kite Roid. kite Roid can block out this card but if you do have necro valley kite Roid can only be used once because kite Roid's second effect of 
banishing it from the graveyard that won't happen because of necrovelli that's why i in my jewels you see me actually activate necrovelli once quintet magicians out on the field just in case just in case they might have kiteroid to block out that attack and then when they try to block out again kiteroid won't activate so that's why i pair it up with necrovelli now as for skills to add on to this deck not i don't think there is any except for yugi's destiny draw that's completely broken to specifically pick out a card from your deck and add it to your hand maybe that i'll probably have that as a skill but i mean maybe your low sense draw skill then you to allow you to draw a low level monster but other than that there isn't really a particular skill i would go after for this deck so guys that was the gravekeeper deck the whole breakdown of it now as you can see i put a question mark on this deck only because i i'm not too sure i don't know if this deck is really good enough it's it is powerful but when you go if when you go into higher ranks you'll soon find out this deck isn't that great there's a few things that are missing from it i would definitely go for more necro valley cards but necro valley card this card itself is a really hard, hard card to pull out from the boxes so if you want i would definitely go for another necro valley so that's all i have for the gravekeeper deck if you found this video useful give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh decks that i plan to make in the future and also to make sure to follow me on twitch because there have actually been a few people that have jumped in as well from these videos and actually you know jumped in to say thank you it'll be great to see you guys jump in there as well also to make sure to follow me on twitter because i post my channel updates when i'm going live what videos are coming up next then a few other stuff going on with life <laughs> so make sure to follow me on twitter and that's all i have for the video so thank you guys for watching and i shall see you guys later <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Anyone else?